Hello guys and welcome. Today we have a huge episode. This is the sub road to glory. If you want to join, I'll leave a player down in the comments below as we build up to Madden 23, which I want to make a video talking about Madden 23 here soon because we are getting some leaked information and um, stuff like that. Now LSU versus Auburn, last time these two faced off was last year where LSU beat them. I think it was 20 to 7 or something like that. It was a very close defensive game. And expect the same here. Before we do that, though, we have some beef going on. It's Tyreek Whitehead, the quarterback for Auburn, which I do have some bad news about him. Uh, he, he was going back and forth. He said, Greg, you getting out there clapped. Uh, Johnny Metro said, hey, you next. Tyreek said, hold up, Greg. Uh, you guys can kind of read the comments. But bad news, though. Also, Baker saying that's tis tis. Greg saying, I need a new OC. I mean, there was a lot, there was a lot going on. Uh, the interview presser. For Jordan Gregory, man, I appreciate. I just want to say thank you guys so much for all you guys that leave the comments, especially these interview types, the game pressers like Jordan Gregory, that format. I love them. Like when we get to Madden 23, those are going to be big um, for for the beefs and stuff. So keep it up. Um, I'm going to be doing more uh, Metro News Network videos in this series here. So make sure you're leaving comments like that, um, so you we can get to know your character and who you are. With that being said, bad news about the quarterback for Auburn, that's Tyreek Whitehead. He is actually not in this game today. I hate to break the news. He has a broken ankle and is out for the rest of the season, actually, believe it or not. So I was talking a lot of crap with him as my player, and uh, I was really looking forward to playing him today, so I'm a little bummed out. But I'm just going to pretend that the backup done, the backup quarterback, um, is Tyreek Whitehead, and I'm going to treat him as such. So... Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, still, we're not, you know, slowing down at all. Now, LSU would open up here, third and five, butter miner. You know, a lot of people ha are kind of starting to get behind the butter. Except for Zach Keeser, a teammate, a running back, says, butter isn't even the real thing, bro. He's trash. We need to put Jimmy Bell back in there. I don't believe butter is the real deal. So, you know, we're going to see if butter can win the approval of the King Keister, the running back, the uh, heart of this offense. Um, I don't know. But what I do know is that LSU needs to win this game. This is a game they don't want to drop. Uh, they were ranked 9 last time they faced Auburn. Believe it or not, last year. But I think what's holding LSU back is that they, they're dropping a few games each year. You know, and then they're struggling to win the games against, you know, like unranked opponents. Though Auburn is a good school, they're not ranked right now. So you got to beat these guys or it's not going to look good for you. And you're not going to be talking playoffs. So we'll see what happens here on third and one. Uh, Mobley in motion. And it's done. Getting wrapped up by Steven Cruz. And that also brings me... So we are pretty far into this series. This is episode 20. I want to know, after the, all these episodes so far, who do you think is the best subscriber so far? Who, who is looking the best going into Madden 23? Pretend like you were a GM, you're a scout. Who do you think you're picking up, man? Who are you drafting out of all these subscribers with your number one overall pick? As Butterminer on third and five, just going to throw it away. And uh, that's going to lead to another three and out for LSU. Is Dunn's going to take off? Can Tyreek Whitehead do that? I don't know. Joel Dunn might steal the show from Tyreek. Second one, this time it's Adams going to keep it. He's going to take it to the outside. Metro is going to cut him off, but D D Zimmer is going to take his legs from under him there. Them two work simultaneously at the same time together really well. Um, Johnny Metro has stated that he doesn't really care where he goes. Um, he knows he's going to go to the MFL. He just hopes he gets to play alongside on the same team as his buddy D Zimmer. That's all he wants because him and D Zimmer are going to bring wherever they're at some championships. Now, Auburn looking pretty good through Joel Dunn, the second uh, second team quarterback there. Ben Dowell with the catch that time. Uh, Johnny and company on the tackle. Third and four. Going to bring shotgun formation here. And man-to-man, -man, which is something Johnny isn't the best at. He's going to try and target him, but he was open. But he misses the pass there. That's one. I think one of the biggest weaknesses I've seen from Johnny Metro as a player is his man-to-man. -man. We'll see if he can, you know... Do better there as he goes along. This is Jake Turcotti with the open field tackle. They are amazing. First and goal, though. Auburn, can they hold him out? LSU does. 
stop them where they're just short second and goal Auburn trying to punch this one in can they do it LSU another run to the right side and that's not gonna work either try something different says LSU that's not gonna work that will set up a third down third and goal here what's gonna happen it's gonna be a handoff to Adams this time once again to the right side and it's D Zimmer and this defense is legit look at D Zimmer just BAM it's three runs to the right side. I don't know about that. I don't like that call. Now, studio update out there. Tennessee versus Florida. Big game. Florida trying to show that, that you know, bounce back. They're one and one. Uh, Jacob Johnson, I believe, is on that team. And uh, they are having a tough, close game against Tennessee. So, second and seven here. Butterminer throwing an interception. All out of butter. All out of good plays. I can't believe that Butter starting is now what I'm going to say because he has played horrible so far. And um, I'm starting to get worried. First, second play of the new drive, he throws a pick and now send out the tired LSU defense who just made a goal line stop. But you know they're going to do it. They are they are the real deal, man. LSU's defense is so good. And they, they are why LSU is so good. If LSU did not have this defense, they probably wouldn't be a ranked team. As Joel Dunn, though, is going to take advantage. So, as good as LSU is, they just, they're too tired after that long defensive stand. And they go back out there in red, you know, red zone defense already. And Joel Dunn's just going to trot his way in. Jake Tricotti just can't get there in time. Touchdown. 10 points. Now, look who's in. Jamie Bell has checked in the head coach has made an adjustment. So 10 to 0 LSU and it's not going it's going to be Zach Keister with the carry not much there though. Um I think I like this though. I, I I do think the the offense needs to, you know, they got to figure something out here. I don't know if putting Jamie Bell in is the call. Maybe you try your third quarterback, but something has to happen. You got to get a quarterback in there. As Jamie Bell whips one to Ryan Hatcher. And he is going to hold on to it first down LSU. So now they have something moving here. But go ahead and get Butterminer out there before he, you know, does anything worse. It's, oh my god, Julian Wright almost picked that one off. That would have been to the house. So doing some something here. Keister carrying the team literally on his back. Then Jamie Bell tosses a 20-yard pass. Ryan Hatcher setting up a first and goal. LSU needs this. You, you want to try and stay in this game as an offense. Can they do it? Oh, my goodness, yes they can. Jamie Bell says, I'm back. Ring the bell. Alrighty, there it is. 7 to 10. Auburn. What can they do here? Can they bounce back? Joel Dunn. Stepping in his pocket, he gets hit as he throws it. It's underthrown. It's underthrown and it's intercepted. The LSU defense is the best defense in history. <laughs> wow, what a turn of events, man! All right, later after that interception, third and four. Jamie Bell, come on. One drive isn't going to be enough to get you that starting spot. You need to earn it now. Can he do it? He's going to dump it down to Keister, who doesn't really have room to turn up. That's not Keister's fault. But uh, at the same time, not a good play design. And uh, we would punt it away. So at least, you know, we have them pinned inside their own 10. But after an interception, a three not like that, that really does, does kind of sting. So we'll see. First and 10, Adams. Going to get stuffed there. Second and eight, Joel Dunn into the pocket. Pressure's coming. He panics and tries to get out of there. Not going to work. It's Casey Woods all over him with a sack. First today. So I'll set up a third and 12 here. What can we do? We get off the field here. It's a handoff to Adams. Up the gut. Breaks one. Fighting and then finally being brought down. Anthony Adams has done good today, but not good enough. Here we go, later. Jamie Bell's still in there. It'll be interesting to see who they start in the ha uh, halftime. 
As Jamie Bell throws an interception. Oh no, this could be a pick six. But James Skaggs comes through with the saving touchdown tackle there. Cor Courtney Reed with the interception. Now Jamie Bell. He's not looking good. He had a chance to come out here. Four out of seven, 32 yards. And an interception. And now LSU defense is just right back out there, man. First and 10. Joe Dunn. Intercepted! And it's my boy, the big boy, middle linebacker, D. Zimmer, with his first career interception ever on the channel. Congratulations, D. Zim. Wow, man. The definition of being built different is Daniel Zimmer. Amazing guy there, dumped down there now, James Skaggs. It's just, unfortunately, it's just not going to matter, man, if if uh, your offense just can't get in anything. Two catches, three catches back-to-back -back for James Skaggs as he gets his team inside the red zone. Also, Keister with a run there. Second in inches. So, James Skaggs, big part of this drive here. And it's Bell going in zone, and it's... Oh, my God, it's intercepted. So, we're not even going to be able to tie the game up. I think, we're, I don't know, I'm probably going to assume LSU is going to be benching Jamie Bell. I mean, he just threw two picks back-to-back. -back. Um, the one drive that they, they went down and scored, it was basically Keister running it down the field. So, but my, Buttermeyer was one out of five, so I don't know. I guess we'll find out when they get on offense who's starting. This has been a roller coaster for the LSU offense, and embarrassing at that because they're at home. There's, you know, Casey Woods is really making... Some big plays. Um, he's really impressed me in this series. First and ten, though. Uh, nice step down to Jackson here. And, I mean, I, I don't want to count LSU out because they are a, a second-half team. Throughout this whole series, we have been a second-half team. Like, that's when our offense comes alive. But, I mean, I don't see how LSU is going to win this game if uh, – because the, the offense seems extra bad today. So, I don't know. Joel Dunn, though, dumped down to Mobley. Mobley's going to take it. Passed all the way. Past the 30 to the 25. Is D. Zimmer chasing him down. Wow. See, the LSU defense is getting tired. I don't know, man. I don't know how much longer they can do this. Andrews to the other side. That's not going to work. Steven Cruising. I think that's Chauncey the Wallet Pratt talking. Sets up a second and 12. Hand off Adams and rip down. Now it's third and 10. Joel Dunn into the pocket. He's going to keep calm and find Hodge. Zach Hodge with the 17-yard reception on third down. That's, that, that stings. And now it's done up the gut for his second rushing touchdown. Joel Dunn has stole the show from Tyreek Whitehead. Which is interesting. I do think, though, if, Zach, uh, if um, Tyreek was out here, their offense would have been a little bit better. Uh, I will say that. So, Butterminer is the starter, as you can see. And he starts off with a 24-yard pass to Clayton DeBush. Then, handoff to Zach Keister. And then an interception. Oh, my God. We need to fire every... Get Butter out of there. Get Jamie out of there. Start the third string quarterback. That's our only hope at this point. Now going deep over the safety. Andrews going to take it. Huge fucking game there. Oh, man. It's falling apart. LSU's falling apart. And now it's Andrews with the catch again. Joel and Jason Andrews. Two big catches back to back. Now Joel is over 200 yards, but he does have two interceptions. Let's see what he can do, man. First and 10. LSU's defense never gives up, though. You know, they're constantly fighting. I mean, if they can stop him to a field goal here, they're still in this game, technically, if you ask me. But it is going to take kind of like a miracle. The time is now against LSU. Joel Dunn dumps down to DeWell, who is going to hold on to it. But LSU gets a stop. Now, Auburn take a field goal here, but no, they're going to go for it. They're going for the nail in the coffin. This is, this is a big play. This could be the game here. But if LSU stops them, they're not out of this. 
Oh my god. Did Auburn just make a mistake? Did Auburn seriously just make a mistake? I don't know. I mean, now we got to see some type of LSU offense. I think Auburn, you know, knowing how LSU's offense is played, they're not worried. As this Butterminer's still in. And he's two for nine. Wow. Two interceptions, 37 yards. And they go three and out, and they punt it away. So Auburn, knowing that, you know, that's why they went for it probably earlier. As Adams going down the field, Johnny Metro first contact, then gets helped out by the wallet. Third and five, Joel Dunn. Pressure's coming, he gets hit, but he's going to find it. No, Mobley in and out of his hands. Oh, my goodness. He was too focused on getting those feet down and didn't reel it in. Later down in the drive, LSU got the ball back. Set up with another third down, third and four. Butterminer, can he pick it up? Quick pass out to Jordan Gregory. Good catch by him, hauling it in. That's a very important catch. And uh, now it'll set up a first and ten. Move those chains. LSU across the 50. Butter's going to keep it. He's going to split the tacklers and be brought down after a six-yard pickup there. All right. So another third and four. And we are three out of eight on third down. We are not good. Can we get this one? It's a handoff. Zach Keister gets wrapped up. There's nothing he can do. He literally just got tackled by four defensive players at the same time. Then we went for it. I had to look. We went for it and did not get it. Um, I thought we were going to kick the field goal, but we went for it and did not get it. So now it's first and ten, and they have good field position. And it's a run to Jason Andrews for a yard. Then lose some yards. Third and 12 now. Auburn. LSU trying to get off the field. They're milking the clock down. Less than three minutes now for LSU to do something. I don't really know. Um... I mean, uh, yeah, this has been pretty embarrassing, and we're at home. And it kind of sucks because, you know, uh, that first off, that was a huge fucking hit. Let's take a look at that. Oh, my God. The double team here. Look at 30, 33 and 32, baby. Metro and King. Bam. But, yeah, we've never lost at home, so I guess this is going to be our first home loss in the whole series. It's been a year and a half, basically, since we've where we're undefeated at home. It's not looking good. First and 10, Butterminer stepping back. He dumps it down to Keister. Keister breaks one. He's going down the sideline. He trucks another, and they call him down. Wow, what a way to get us back confident in this game. Just crucifying that man. There's still plenty to do here, though. First and ten, Butterminer throws a dot over the top, and it's Clayton to push. Touchdown, LSU. Things just got a lot more interesting. 14 to 17. We need this onside kick or the game is over, which we do have three timeouts, though. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh my God. Did we just get that? Uh, it, I don't know who got it. I really don't know who got it. It looks like LSU had picked it up. Uh, <laughs> what? Let's take another look. Oh my God. No fucking way. I know we're a second half team, but you guys can't keep doing this to me right now. Are we about to win this fucking game? We just got the onside kick. All right. Everything I've said about Butter, if he can lead us down and win this game, I take it all back. First and 10, Butter Miner steps back, quick slant, caught. Oh, brought down. Oh, he goes down awkwardly, but he gets up. That's good. Dave Brown, 15 yards. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why does LSU do this to me every single freaking week? Oh man. Butterminer stepping into the pocket. Has time. Throwing this one in. It's going to be a catch by Crybaby Hooten. Butterminer's played a lot better here in the fourth. 
or in the second half, should I say. Butter Miner. Going to be a screen. Zach Keister doesn't have the speed, man. That's one thing, man. That's one thing he's lacking is speed. You've seen it time and time again. So that Mad 23 rating is going to be he's going to be kind of slow. He's going to be kind of slow, man. Third and, third and one. Man in motion. Come on, we need this. 50 seconds left. Please, please. Butter Miner stepping back in the pocket. A guy's wide open. And he's going to go down. It's Jordan Gregory finding the seam. He's finding the hole in the zone. Jordan Gregory is fucking phenomenal, man. He is our star uh, currently in the stats. He's number one wide receiver. Butter Miner going to connect with Crybaby Hooten once again. Using the sideline. 40 seconds left. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We are here. We could tie this game up if, if we just play smart. Butterminer, hand off to Keister, it's a run! He's gonna pick up the first, and that should stop the clock. It does. It does. Julian Wright. Keister looks a little tired there. Oh god. Cue the epic music. First and goal. What's gonna happen? Butterminer. He's gonna throw a quick slam! Touchdown! It's Clayton! The Bush! <laughs> oh my god. Are you freaking kidding me right now? Why do you guys do this to me, man? Oh my god, what a game. What a comeback game. LSU takes the lead. Auburn can't hold on. All we got to do now is play defense for 33 seconds. Can LSU hold on to the upset? Or, well, it wouldn't be an upset. Can they just hold on? Auburn let the upset slip through their fingertips. An unranked team. This would have definitely made Auburn ranked. Well, let's see what they have. Going up against the best defense in the nation. It's a, it's a hard task to face. Joel, Joel Dunn going down. Pressure got there. Three stacks for the day for LSU's defense. Second and 13. Joel Dunn. Pressure's coming again. He gets hit as he throws it. Intercepted. Jaden King with his second on the day. And that's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. LSU with the comeback victory. They stay undefeated at home for the whole series. They've never lost at home. It was a sloppy win. That much is for sure. But I think we know that Butterminer is the way we have to stick to it. We have to stick with Butterminer. He's just showed us the most positive outcomes. Keister, though. Got his triple digits again. I think he's on a, a triple digit streak. I want to take a look at that and see how long he's been doing that. Clayton the Bush turned up when we needed him the most, though. Thanks, thankfully for him, we won this game. And of course, the defense. Without LSU defense, we wouldn't be winning anything. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode today. Let me know what you think. And until next time, I'll see you on the next one.